business editor Richard Southern joins us. We saw gas prices rise back above the two cent per liter mark over the weekend and there's more ominous news tonight for drivers, Richard. Yeah, gas isn't changing tonight, Erica, but I suspect it will be in about 48 hours time. Good to see you. We're talking about oil here uh, this evening because the price forward bubbling higher yet again. It's at a multi-month high, 117 bucks the barrel. That is mighty expensive for oil. Uh, the recent uptick comes amid news out of China. That country is loosening its so-called zero COVID restrictions. It's starting to reopen. Uh, public transit services starting back up in Beijing. And the major two-month lockdown in Shanghai is set to ease on June 1st. China is a big consumer of oil, so the fact that it's reopening has the price rising. Also boosting uh, the price, though, is uh, the European Union efforts to get Hungary on board in its plan for a Russian oil embargo. Gas, as I say, not changing tonight. Look for a potential uptick first thing on Wednesday, though. Uh, as far as a silver lining here, there is one, Erica. The higher price for oil is beneficial to the Toronto Stock Exchange which rose for a seventh straight day today after a rocky start to the year. The TSX is once again hot thanks to rising oil stocks. All right, and the pandemic has hit cruise lines particularly hard. The boats are sailing once again, but the problems, they're not over, Richard. Not enough people to staff them, Erica. Mm. It's the same problem restaurants here in the GTA have. It's the same reason why the lineups are so big at Pearson Airport. Just not enough workers back on the job. Uh, the good news, as you say, is the itineraries have not yet changed, though cruise goers will notice some changes. Carnival Cruise Line says it's temporarily closing two restaurants on all its ships because it simply doesn't have enough people to cook or work in them. Norwegian Cruise Line's Pride of America, one of its big ships operating usually with 900 crew, is now operating on a skeleton crew of just over 500. Holland America deciding to slow its restart. Uh, again, all this as uh, companies both on the seas and on dry land struggle to staff up with everyone getting back out in the world, Eric. Yeah, everybody's just uh, eager to get out and travel again. Okay, finally, uh, while the cruise industry continues to have its issues, it appears cinemas are recovering nicely from the pandemic. Uh, judging by one movie, absolutely. Uh, did you see the Tom Cruise? Did you go see it over the weekend? The Top Gun? Do you know what? Uh, I was sequel? supposed to go see it, but we're, we've delayed it until next weekend because we thought it might be too busy, actually. Yeah, it might have been a good yeah. call, Erica, because, boy, it made a lot of money over the weekend. In fact, would you believe this is the biggest opening ever? There's Tom in his airplane. Biggest opening ever for Tom Cruise. Uh, it pulled in more than 100 million Top Gun Maverick. Uh, the 59-year-old Tom Cruise uh, natching his biggest opening ever. The last biggest one before this was War of the Worlds back in 05. It made 64 million. This pulled in a total of 124 a million in North America in a three-day uh, weekend. Uh, the movie was originally scheduled to come out in the summer of 2000, but was delayed due to COVID. The production rented these fighter jets from the U.S. Navy for $11,300 an hour. Under the stipulation, though, and this is true, that Tom Cruise was not allowed to touch the controls, Erica. He just sat in the back seat while they filmed them. Let the pilots do all the work there. Interesting. Okay, thanks for joining us, Richard. That's business editor Richard Southern. Thank you.